Hey everybody, welcome to this week's video. My name is Bethany and I am so glad you're here. If you are new to watching my videos, um, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. As I normally do, I'm starting out on a piece of unmounted 500 grit UART sanded paper. I love to use the sanded papers because it allows for wet underpaintings and lots of different layers. The 500 grit is kind of a medium grit of, of the UART line. The, it goes all the way to 280 grit, which is very, very rough, and then all the way to as fine as 800 grit, which is very, very fine. I wanted to paint this really beautiful house. It's one of my favorite houses in the neighborhood where I live. And my husband and I love to take walks in the neighborhood, looking at all of the really unique homes. They're all very different. I am measuring the angles and trying to emulate the angles that I see. It's, this is a little challenging photograph because I'm below the house and the, the perspective of the windows and the, the roof line, there it's very, it's very different to draw. It's not a straight on photograph. And so I'm just really trying to try to get these angles correct. Even the, the roof line isn't horizontal, it's angled slightly down. This house is up on a little hill and there's, this is actually the side of the house where there's some really neat little steps and this fun window and all of these, the shrubbery and the trees surrounding it. And I just liked the way the light was going across the house, really highlighting it with those vines and dark areas um, on it as well. to note is whatever you sketch down you can usually cover up and re-sketch later you can correct anything that doesn't quite look accurate throughout the painting process of a pastel and that is really one reason why I love to use the sanded papers is because it's very forgiving you can brush it off you can use wet media to try to to take out areas that you're not loving or to add a wash of color to help you correct angles I often will go back in with alcohol several times just to help me get those angles accurate but this is a new pastel, a dark blue new pastel. Of course, I'm following the darkness of the shrubs and trees that you see in this, in this photograph using very light side, broad side of this new pastel. And I am heading towards an alcohol wash with a fan brush. And also I like to use a glazing brush. Both of those, I kind of go back and forth depending on how much pastel I want to move around on my paper. You'll notice that I left a lot of the house uncovered by any pastel at all. And so I'm going to start putting in a little bit here on the roof line. The roof line in this image, it's of course it's a dark gray roof, but anything in shadow especially is going to look quite a bit cooler and bluer. And so I'm using a, this is a, another new pastel and I'm very lightly marking in some of the shadow areas on this house course the edge of the of the roof line there's that large window at the bottom and I'm also going to bring in this is a shocking color there's not any bright oranges in the trees on this reference photo but this is a great way to really vary your greens 
by bringing in some warmer colors in some of the areas, especially the more sunlit areas, and that's really kind of what I'm focusing on. You'll notice that I put the orange near the house where, where that green tree is receiving the light. Also in some areas on the ground and then the distant trees that are being more hit by light. And so I'm playing with this and I am gonna also put this in with rubbing alcohol to mix and blend those colors together. Wonderful thing about UART is that alcohol does not make the paper buckle in any way. And so you can really have fun with your washes here and just creating some different effects, which makes um, it so much fun once you start applying the pastel, the, dry, the more dry pastel final layers. I'm pretty pleased with the value structure of what my underpainting looks like. I often will go right back in with the same pastel. This is the same blue new pastel that I used to wash it in in that final layer to reiterate that darkness and so I can have that softer more buttery texture of that dark pastel to build upon. Pastel is such a beautiful crystalline structure and whenever you wash it in with rubbing alcohol it really breaks down those crystals to where it's not quite as it doesn't have the same texture and so that's one reason why i like to go right back in with that same color and then i build those those crystalline layers after the fact the richeson that i'm kind of experimenting with right now to see what might be a great value for the shaded areas of that that grass oftentimes i will try a color out and just kind of think about it before i commit and i usually start with the darker colors and move towards those lighter colors paper towel to blend in and swish that pastel around. The paper towel has kind of a different quality. It, it, it's not really like the foam and it's not really like your fingers. It kind of makes these fun little whisks and I will use it every now and then just to tap on a color just to push it into the paper a little bit more and reveal a little bit more tooth especially since I covered those areas and I want to be able to apply the brighter areas. adding the charcoal color in the windows for more of the end of the piece. But this, this painting, I, thought, I felt like it needed for me to go ahead and put that in, especially because I wanted to make sure the angles looked accurate. I needed to see that darkness to see what that did to, to the perspective of this piece. I always love this step of adding in the light shining onto a house, especially houses like this that are mostly cast in shadow and then there's these really fun beautiful cast shadows onto the brick or onto the roof line. This is a very light peachy pink that I'm using over that blue base. There's plenty of tooth because I remember I kind of mushed it into the paper with my Viva paper towel that I love. Really looking at the at the photograph here and I'm being very careful and making a lot of broken marks. I don't want to draw every line that exists in that that multi-paned window at the bottom. I'm not gonna draw every little square. I love the way that the charcoal was very impressionistic when it went in, it wasn't exactly perfectly rectangular creates a really painterly quality to that house. So now that I'm happy enough with that house, for now anyway, I'm going to start building up more of the green in the distant, the distant trees and then the, the vines up against the house, bushes and the grasses and of course the stairs. And this is a Richeson, very true green. And in the photograph, that you can, it's really small on your screen right now, but if, but there is some very sunlit areas. There's a vine that's crawling up the side of the house and they are very bright. And so I'm using this brighter Richeson, experimenting right now with color. Just because you put something down doesn't mean you have to keep it all the time. And so I'm using very light marks, even though it does cover quite a bit of the underpainting. 
I'm going to vary my greens quite a bit within the process of this painting. This is a warmer green than that Richeson. This is a Terry Ludwig, and I'm using very, very light, just tapping marks. I'm barely touching the surface of the paper at all. I'm just trying to kind of glaze that color in. I also want to add that dappled light effect that is over the roof line. So this is a vintage pastel. It's a little creamier than the pink. It's a little, not creamier, I would say more yellow than the pink. And I'm not sure I like that. So see, I'm just gonna bring in a peachier, pinker pastel right there and just cover it back up. That's something using a lot of underpaintings, you have so much tooth left. If you make a wrong temperature choice, it's usually pretty easy to, to bring that back to it, to something that is more that has more color harmony using very light tapping and marks and then also pulling in this pe this gray pencil it's actually a um, pastel pencil and using some side strokes almost like little hash marks to indicate the roof tiles. I didn't want that smooth texture just off of the underpainting. I do want it to look like there's tiles, and this is actually, I believe, a, a it's a metal roof, but it looks kind of almost like wooden shingles. That's a, a great way to use, use different pastel implements to your advantage. So pencils make great lines for bricks and roofs and other types of wooden things. Also swiped in a ton of very bright true green there and just kind of went for it. And, and I'm actually going to wash it in with rubbing alcohol here in a minute again. I often will go back and forth and back and forth between dry pastel and then rubbing alcohol. While that rubbing alcohol is drying, I'm going to work a little bit on the stairs and bringing in some really dark mauve, a very neutral color. These are great colors for any kind of muted brick, especially they're not, of course, very vibrant, but we'll be, bring some vibrancy into some of them. Went and picked up a dark ochre Carbothello pencil, and I'm just going to keep sketching in these stairway, the staircase up to the little side yard. Okay, and right now you're probably been wondering, when is Bethany gonna work on that tree? Or is she finished? Like what's going on over there on that left side? This is often how I do it. I love to create kind of this big blobby shape for trees. And then I work my way and carve into, into the branches and foliage that I've made to really cut out the tree that I want. I haven't added any of that distant, really bright lights. I kind of lost the, the trunk that I had created in the beginning through all the different alcohol washes. But since I have so much tooth left with this nice 500 grit, I can just add it in again. So now I'm going to add some of those brighter colors in the distance. This is a really bright Richeson. I'm going to carve in and around over some of that darkness at the base to imply that those are trees in the distance that are that are receiving a little bit more light than what is happening here at this house. What's in the distance in actuality in this house, there's a little park that's right past it and so there's a lot of trees. They're, they're more out in the open. Add in some bright, very, very clear warm greens there at the base where there's going to be some light shining through the trees. Looking at kind of the, the general shapes of those of those shadows and those those highlights and how there's there's tree trunks and branches being cast upon this upon this grass. bringing in a little bright peach onto the staircase to show where the sunlight is hitting the surface of them. Mm -hmm. 
one thing I have to be really careful about here is the blues that I'm using on in the sky is the same shadow color on the house. I don't want areas of the house to look kind of like their sky. There's a little spit of a triangle of some siding next to the chimney that is actual siding, but it's the same color. And right now I'm trying to experiment to see how can I how can I fix that a little bit? How can I make that look more like the house and less like a, triang a triangular, right there where I am right now, triangular piece of sky. So I'm pulling in my pencil right here. I'm gonna reiterate the edges of the roof line. And I can also, you see that I softened it a little bit, added a little bit more green, and I softened that blue right out of that area because it was just a little too close to the sky color. I also added some turquoise into the sky. I love to use those analogous colors in my skies to create some vibrancy. So using light turquoises with your blue, with your more cobalt and ultramarines will help you there. Usually the same value, just a little different color temperature. One thing I want to change immediately is how bright and vibrant the chimney is. And so I put, I cut in a little bit of blue over it and then I'm gonna use some rubbing alcohol to kind of soften it as if there's some tree branches or some shadows kind of going over it. And that's just gonna help block out that shape a little bit so it doesn't really draw the eye quite as much as what it was. I hope you enjoyed watching that pastel come to life. It was so much fun to paint. It's always fun to teach you new techniques and I hope you learned something. If you did, please give this video a like. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell so you can know when a new video comes available. If you'd also like to help support this content coming out, every little bit helps. I would love it if you would consider visiting my Patreon page. The link is right here. Thank you so much for considering it. Thank you for spending your time with me today and I will see you around.